Welcome, hello students. Welcome to all of you. So today we are going to perform second experiment of B.Tech first year physics course, and the name of the experiment is. Let me write its aim. So the aim of this experiment is to find the grating element of a plane diffraction grating. Let me write down the now the apparatus required. for this experiment okay now you can see i have written here the apparatus required so the apparatus required is a helium neon laser after that we will need a laboratory jack it is nothing but it is a stand for laser i will show you it in the video and this stand is of adjustable height by using the screw provided with this laboratory jack we can move the screw we can move the position of the laser upward or downward we can adjust the height of the laser then we need plane diffraction grating of whom uh, of which the grating element has to be found so then we need a grating holder also then uh, we need a stand for grating holder then we need a screen and this screen is usually fixed on a stand then we need a steel scale which is of uh, 15 inch long please remember plastic scale will not uh, be suitable for this particular experiment so we will be using steel scale it is the because of the reason uh, because on a steel scale the markings uh, start exactly from the uh, starting point of the scale but in case of a plastic scale the markings do not start from the uh, starting point of the scale the markings start after certain gap so that we uh, will create some sort of limitation over the calculation of the screen distance then of course we need a graph paper where we will be recording the position of the maxima then we will need a cello tape with the tape dispenser so this is the apparatus required by us let us now use what is the formula used here let me write it the formula used in this experiment to find the grating element let us now write it so students you can see here i have written the formula used so we will be doing this experiment and in this experiment we will be actually using uh, two different uh, expressions to calculate the uh, grating element of uh, a plane diffraction grating so let uh, small d is the grating element n is the order of diffraction lambda is let us say wavelength of the light that we are using theta n is let us say angle of diffraction for any maximum let us say its number is n let us, therefore we will call it as nth maximum then uh, this equation d sin theta is equal to n lambda it is the equation of diffraction of uh, plane waves from uh, a diffraction grating so we will be using this equation therefore the small d is actually the grating element so we want to calculate it so d is equal to therefore n sin n lambda upon sin theta so we have to calculate theta n the angle of diffraction to calculate angle of diffraction we will be using indirect method we will be recording the diffraction maxima pattern on a graph paper at a certain distance from screen so let us say yn is the position of nth maximum on the screen from the central spot let us say capital d is the distance between the slit and the screen then uh, uh, the graph will be like uh, sorry the the situation will be like this so this will be central maximum on the screen let us say this is o so this is uh, on the screen let us say this is the nth maximum then uh, this distance between uh, uh, this distance so the situation will be like this if uh, uh, y n is the distance of let us say this o is the central maximum this pn is the nth diffraction maximum so the distance between o and pn is let us say yn so this is the point where uh, diffraction takes place so this is will point will be on the diffraction grating i would use d dot g as abbreviation for diffraction grating this o is the central maximum it is also called prime primary maximum you have studied this in your school classes school physics so it is primary maximum it is because of the primary wavefronts so this ray of light will go undiffracted because it is from the 
initial let us say this is laser here so the laser light will go in this direction from diffraction grating so the light which goes undeviated creates a center maximum but the diffracted light or the light which will bend it will go to certain other direction let us say this is the nth maximum so this is the diffracted light this is the diffracted light which will produce secondary maxima this is undiffracted light and uh, the angle between undiffracted light the, the, which you can see that it is the initial path of the light and the path of the light after bending this angle is called angle of diffraction you can also assume in your mind it to be as angle of bending so from this uh, triangle you can very easily see that this formula tan theta n which is equal to perpendicular upon base it is justified so this is how formula used will be helping us to evaluate the diffraction grating element of a plane diffraction grating we will use second formula from second formula we will find theta n then we from that value of theta n we will insert it in this value then you will we will find the value of small d let me now go to the next page okay we will now discuss brief theory of plane diffraction grating first of all let us see what is plane diffraction grating a plane diffraction grating a plane diffraction grating is a very thin plane film of special plastic like material which has large number of slits placed together in a plane and that plane is of course it is the plane of sheet so i would uh, now like to show you what is the structure of the plane diffraction grating so it is a rectangular sheet i will show you this plane diffraction grating in the video also the one which we will be using in the laboratory so this is a plane diffraction grating let me use different color schemes here okay students i have drawn here uh, an uh, just uh, uh, indicative uh, diagram of a plane diffraction grating so plane diffraction grating it is uh, a plane sheet you have seen this it i, I will show it actual uh, uh, in actual practice it does not uh, look colored in actual practice it looks almost transparent just for creating a more awareness or uh, getting uh, you better idea i have shown different uh, colors in this so this is how what is called plane diffraction grating if you can see this portion which i have shown by light blue it is uh, actually dark region it is actually not dark region this is not the appropriate word here it is actually the opaque region no light can pass through it so this region which i have shown by just light uh, yellow color it is actually the transparent region so in this sheet we are having strips 
दीज स्ट्रिप्स आर अल्टरनेटिवली ओपेक ट्रांसपेरेंट ओपेक ट्रांसपेरेंट ओपेक ट्रांसपेरेंट ओपेक ट्रांसपेरेंट एंड सो ऑन आई हैव शोन ओनली जस्ट सर्टन पार्ट सो यू कैन सी द विथ ऑफ ओपेक एंड ट्रांसपेरेंट पार्ट इज नॉट द सेम लेट अस से बी इज द विथ ऑफ ट्रांसपेरेंट ओपेक पार्ट लेट अस से बी इज द विथ ऑफ ओपेक पार्ट एंड लेट अस से ए इज द विथ ऑफ ट्रांसपेरेंट पार्ट सो द सम ए प्लस बी इज इक्वल टू स्मॉल डी इज कॉल्ड स्लिट विथ सो प्लीज रिमेंबर वन ओपेक प्लस वन ट्रांसपेरेंट रीजन मेक वन स्लिट सो दिस स्लिट वेड्थ ऑफ प्लेन डायफ्रैक्शन ग्रेटिंग is called diffraction is called grating element is called grating element so please remember grating element is nothing nothing but slit width now please remember actually how one slit is formed a one slit is uh, the this this region is called one slit so this region is called one slit let me now justify this part so this region is called one slit so this is second slit so you can see in every slit what is the width you can see this width is a and this is the half portion of transparent is counted toward left side and half sorry half portion of opaque is counted toward left side and half portion of opaque is counted towards right side so obviously this distance will be b by 2 similarly this distance will also be b by 2 so you can see slit width and this distance is actually small d so from figure from figure we can very easily convince ourselves that small d is equal to b by 2 plus a plus b by 2 therefore small d is equal to a plus b this is what i have already written so here i wrote it without any explanation and here i have justified it by showing or convincing you on the diagram let me now go to the next page of today's lecture okay let us now draw the ray diagram so this is laser light this is actually helium neon laser in the laboratory i will be using helium neon laser so this helium neon laser please forgive me for bad drawing so this helium neon laser it will emit light it the wavelength of this light will be 6 9 4 3 sorry it is the actually of ruby laser wavelength sorry so this wavelength will be 6328 angstrom and this wavelength is given so this laser light we will now pass through the grating which i have shown in my previous slide and i will put this grating on a stand 
so from this grating the bending of light will take place some light will continue to travel on its uh, original uh, in toward its original direction so we will place place a screen i we will put a graph paper on the screen so after that we will place that screen on a stand so this point will become o that will be our central maximum and some light from this point diffraction bending of light will take place some light ray will uh, come here some light ray will come here so this point will be our p1 first diffraction maximum and this angle will be theta1 angle of diffraction for first max this will be first order diffraction this point will be p2 and this angle with respect to the original direction of light will be theta2 so if i join this with the straight line similarly diffraction of light will take place on the other side also so this point i will call it to be p1 dash or p1 prime and this angle will be theoretically same as that of this angle so i will call this to be theta1 similarly for a second maximum the light will bend and it will strike at somewhere different point let me increase the width of the graph so please allow wait for some time let me change the graph suppose the screen is of this much size okay so this point uh, will be called as uh, p2 dash or p2 prime so what we will be doing we will be measuring uh, with the help of steel scale this distance will be measured let us say this distance is capital d then this angle we need to measure so this distance between distance between o and p1 will be y1 similarly distance between o and p2 this distance between o and p2 it will be y2 so this distance will be y2 so what we will be measuring actually we will be measuring y1 as average value so average value will be nothing it will be actually op1 that is value of y1 on the left hand side plus op1 dash that is the value of y1 on the right hand side then we will divide it by 2 that will be average value of y1 similarly y2 will be equal to op2 plus op2 dash upon 2 if we want to make measurements up to third order this is for first order n is equal to 1 this is for second order n is equal to 2 for third order y3 will be equal to op3 plus op3 dash upon 2 that is n is equal to 3 is it okay so we will be just uh, in the observation uh, we will be putting uh, this ray diagrams and uh, after that we will be uh, uh, measuring first of all capital D after that we will be uh, measuring y1 y2 y3 then we will measure theta 1 what will be theta 1 tan theta 1 if you see this right angled triangle this point is a point on a diffraction grating let us say this is dg and uh, this uh, diffraction grating point is there this point is o so in a triangle if you can appreciate if you can understand this point is o this point is p1 this angle is uh, p1 dash rather this angle is theta 1 and this distance is y1 this uh, distance is capital d this is a uh, uh, plane diffraction grating so dg so you can very easily see that tan theta 1 will be equal to y1 upon capital D similarly so the value of y1 will actually come from uh, this value so this is y1 actually equal to op1 plus op1 dash divided by 2 
Similarly, tan theta two will be equal to y two upon capital D, and tan theta three will be equal to y three upon capital D. So this is how we will measure uh, these uh, angles. From uh, there, you should have a scientific calculator actually. So you can calculate theta one by using this expression. It will be tan inverse y one upon capital D. Similarly, you will be able to calculate theta two. It will be tan inverse y two upon capital D. Similarly, from this you will be able to find theta three, which will be equal to tan inverse y three upon capital D. Let me add new page. to uh, this uh, presentation so we have now calculated theta 1 theta 2 theta 3 therefore we can we will find the value of d which was given by n lambda upon sin theta so for first order the value of d will be d1 it will be 1 lambda upon sin of theta 1 and second value will be 2 lambda upon sin theta 2 and third value will be 3 lambda upon sin theta 3 actually these three values should be same but due to random error these values are not exactly same so average value we will find average value of d will be equal to d1 plus d2 plus d3 upon 3 so this will give me the final answer so this is uh, about a brief theory of uh, this uh, experiment let us now perform the experiment and observe the uh, readings and after that we will do the calculations okay so i will uh, stop here and now we will uh, we uh, i and uh, professor kuldeep kaur we will go to the experimental uh, um, um, position there we will show you the equipments and we will tell you how to perform the experiment and how to take the readings so let us now wait for that part after that we will do the calculations thank you welcome students uh, today we are going to do the second experiment so myself uh, randeer singh and along with me is your physics teacher professor kuldeep kaur and we both of us will do experiment and uh, the name of uh, today's experiment is to find the grating element of uh, a plane diffraction grating so let me first of all show you what is plane diffraction grating so this equipment it is called plane diffraction grating let me show it so you can see here so because of the mirror effect you will be uh, uh, you will not be able to read it properly so this is a plane diffraction grating so this is uh, actually uh, there, there are three plane diffraction gratings this is first one this is second one this is third one we will be doing the experiment with one of uh, these three plane diffraction gratings if you can read it because it is inverted if you read it it is 1 0 so there are 100 slits in 1 mm of uh, this uh, plane diffraction grating there are this is a 300 there are 300 slits in uh, plane diffraction grating and uh, there are 600 slits in plane diffraction grating what we will do we will uh, put uh, this plane diffraction grating in the path of uh, a laser beam so if i show you then uh, this is this is a helium neon laser you can see it this is a helium neon laser and uh, 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 please uh, remember because of the front camera everything is uh, inverted so this is a helium neon laser and uh, uh, this helium neon laser is emitting light i can show you if i put my hand here this light is coming is it okay so this helium neon laser light is uh, passing and this is a stand over which i will place the plane diffraction grating madam is placing this plane diffraction grating so this plane diffraction grating has been placed so if i show you from the back side you can see so this uh, laser light 
this laser light is falling on this grating so i will first put it on the black part now you can see this is spot is on the black part i will now pass it through transparent part now this light is now passing through it and it is uh, falling on a screen if i do not pass through it suppose uh, this is the slot i move i am moving it now you can see on the screen there is only one spot you can see there is only one spot if i now put uh, diffraction grating in the path of the light then there are many spots and this is the diffraction of light you know what is diffraction of light it is the bending of light around the sharp corners of an obstacle so this uh, screen this screen and this uh, grating the distance between them can be increased or decreased if i bring this screen toward this then the distance will increase due to which the separation between various maxima will uh, decrease if i move it away then the separation between various maxima will increase so we will uh, choose this appropriately so we will choose this uh, distance appropriately so i will now request madam to please hold this camera so that uh, i i am now choosing this distance appropriately okay first of all we will measure what is the distance between this uh, grating and this uh, screen so let me first, first measure this distance so if i place it here so this distance is 23. this if i show it like this this distance between the screen and the slits is 23.1 cm so i will note it down on the copy this is 23.1 cm so next i will mark one line over here after marking one line after marking one line wherever we are have a, a uh, spot we will mark cross here so this was the observation part now what uh, we will uh, do we will switch off the laser when we will switch off the laser then after switching off the laser we will uh, remove this uh, screen and we will we will uh, we have now i have now removed this screen please remember this central spot was this central spot was bright spot it was the primary maximum so i will call it as o this was the first secondary maximum i will call this as p1 this is second secondary maximum i will call it as p2 i will call this as p3 similarly on the left hand side this is the first secondary maximum so p1 second secondary maximum p2 and third secondary maximum p3 so what we have done we have got the seven spots this o represents central spot which is not diffracted this is first secondary spot this is the first diffraction maximum this is the second diffraction maximum and this is the third diffraction maximum similarly this is the first diffraction maximum on the left hand side this is the second diffraction maximum this is the third diffraction maximum what we will have to do now we have to measure the distance between o and p1 on the first side and o and p1 on the second side so for your convenience instead on the left hand side uh, instead i will use p1 dash p2 dash and p3 dash so on the left hand side i have marked the points as p1 p2 p3 and on the left hand side i have marked the points as 
P1 dash, P2 dash and P3 dash. So we will now measure this distance. So I will now measure these distances. Yes. Okay, if I measure this distance. So OP1 is my 1.4 centimeter and OP1 dash is OP1 dash is 1.5 centimeter. Similarly, OP2 is 2.8 centimeter. And OP2 dash is 2.8 centimeter. Similarly, OP3 OP3 is 4.2 centimeter. And OP3 dash is 4.3 centimeters. So I will uh, now stop this uh, video recording part. Rest of the part we will do on the uh, board and I will give you theory there. Thank you. So you can see I have written these values here because of the recording through front camera everything is inverted so please uh, uh, i will show you on the board so i will sc stop the recording here now i will show you the calculation part and result part on the separate screen okay welcome students now you have seen how to perform the experiment we have now just now made the observations let us now perform the calculations i have already shown you the graph paper i will share the scanned copy of graph paper with you in the whatsapp group there you can take out its printout and now let us now do the calculations so from the graph paper we know the following things let us now find the angles of diffraction for first order second order and third order okay as shown in the experiment we found that this was we draw a line first of all passing through all the maxima then this was the central maximum this was actually p1 first maximum this was p2 second maximum this was p3 third maximum and on the left hand side i showed p1 dash and p2 dash and p3 dash so this distance was on both of the sides this distance was pi 1 we will take its average value on both sides this distance was y2 and on both of the sides this distance was y3 so i have shown you by marking this that actually op1 was equal to 1.4 centimeter and op1 dash was also was equal to 1.5 centimeter so y1 will be equal to the average value of both of these so it will be op1 plus op1 dash upon 2 so it will be 1.4 plus 1.5 upon 2 that will be 1.45 centimeter similarly uh, this uh, y2 which is equal to op2 plus op2 dash upon 2 op2 was actually 2.8 centimeter and op2 dash uh, was also 2.8 centimeter and their average will be equal to 2.8 centimeter and uh, similarly y3 was equal to uh, this was uh, op3 plus op3 dash upon 2 that was equal to 4.2 plus 4.2 
upon 2 equal to 4.2 centimeter. Now, as shown in the video, we know that uh, we have found, uh, we have rather observed because this is the observation part. We have observed that uh, capital D was actually 23.1 centimeter. This is the distance between diffraction grating and screen. This was already noted. Let us now find the value of theta 1 as discussed previously theta 1 is equal to tan inverse y1 upon capital D. It will be tan inverse y1 is actually 1.45 upon 23.1. So let me write its value. Let me calculate its value using scientific calculator. Okay students, uh, so I have used uh, this uh, observation for making the calculation. So this uh, answer is actually 3.59 degree. Similarly, I will be writing the values of theta 1 and theta 2 with the help of scientific calculator. You can just note down these values. Okay, I have made the calculations from the observation part. You can see the angle of diffraction for second order is 6.91 degree. And the angle of diffraction for third order is actually 10.30 degree. Let us now find the value of grating element from first order. So it was D1 is equal to 1 lambda upon sine theta 1. So that is equal to 1. Lambda is 6328 angstrom upon sine of, it was, let me check what was the value of it was 3.59 degree so that will be sign of 3.59 degree so that will be equal to 6.328 into 10 raised to power minus 5 centimeter upon sign of 3.59 degree let me write its value So you can see I have made the calculations and the value of grating element for first order comes out to be 101.9 centimeter. Similarly, we will find the grating element for second order and third order. So I am going to write the values of these second order and third order grating elements. You can make these calculations yourself at home and verify. So let me write these values for you. Sorry students, I want to make a correction. I previously wrote it like 101.09 centimeter. I forgot this uh, 10 raised to power minus 5 factor. So now I have made this correction. Please remember the value of D1 for first order was this was 101.09 into 10 raised to power minus 5 centimeter. Similarly for second order the value is 105.20 into 10 raised to power minus 5 centimeter. And the third order, it is 106.17 into 10 raised to power minus 5 centimeter. So let us now find average value of grating element. Average value of grating element, which is also called as slit width. So please. Do not take panic of this. Grating element is nothing but it is slit width. It will be equal to D1 plus D2 plus D3 upon 3. So it will become 101.09 plus 105.20 plus 106.17. 10 raised to power minus 5 will be common. And upon this I will write as 3. So let me find this value and write it for you. So the average value of this will be 104 into 10 raised to power. Uh, sorry, I forgot to write the second decimal place. Let me correct it. It is 104 point. It is 104.15 into 10 raised to power minus 5 centimeter. So let me go to the next page. So now 
we have the observed value d is equal to observed value of grating element it is 104.15 into 10 raised to power minus 15 centimeter let us now find the actual value value of d so if you see the video that i have shown while doing the experiment we performed the experiment there were actually three diffraction gratings in the setup that we were given we performed experiment with the first one first sample of first piece where we have 100 slits per millimeter so if i say this is actually let us say this is let us say one millimeter and d is slit width which is also actually the grating element so as per manufacturer manufacturer is saying that there are 100 slits in 1 mm so it means in terms of slit width this distance should be 100 d because one slit has width d so 100 slits will have width 100 d so according to manufacturer 100 slits have width 1 mm so i can very easily see that 100 d should be equal to 1 mm i would be rather preferring it in uh, centimeter so this will become 10 raised to power minus 1 centimeter because we know that 1 centimeter is equal to 10 millimeter so i am writing in the reverse order so therefore the actual value of d will be equal to 10 raised to power minus 3 centimeter which with the certain mathematical manipulation i can write it to be 100 into 10 raised to power minus 5 centimeter this is the actual value so now we have actual value with us which is this one we have the observed value with us which is this one it was 104 let us now do the last part this is percentage error percentage error it is equal to actual value minus observed value upon actual value into 100 so this will that this will become 100 minus 104.15 into 10 raised to power minus 5 centimeter that will be common and actual value is again 100 into 10 raised to power minus 5 centimeter into 100 this centimeter will get cancelled with this this will get cancelled with this and this will get cancelled with this it is therefore minus 4.15 percent this is the percentage error in uh, today's uh, experiment so i hope uh, you have understood uh, the concept uh, that we wanted to teach to you and now you will be able to find the uh, diffraction grating element of a plane diffraction grating uh, um, physically yourself whenever you visit the lab uh, the lab personally as and when the lockdown is uh, uh, relaxed so i uh, hope that you would uh, find this uh, effort by us uh, to be useful for your uh, uh, technical uh, knowledge in the field of uh, physics thank you thanks a lot from both of us randeer singh and kuldeep kaur madam thank you